we started the surgery on our patient around 8.30. He had had previous heart surgery, so it took a while to, uh, to prepare the operative site such that we could remove his heart and replace it with that of the, uh, of the animals. That process took uh, a few more hours and uh, really towards the end of the, of the afternoon, we were prepared uh, to uh, discontinue the surgery and test the new heart in its new environment. And uh, we were quite pleased that uh, as we separated from the heart-lung machine, the animal heart was uh, functioning by my eye at least, just about as normal as we could have expected. He simply didn't want to die, doesn't want to die. And um, he felt that if he had no opportunity, and he was pretty well convinced by multiple doctors who had told him he had a fatal disease and he was unlikely to leave the hospital because of it. With that as a background, as, as an alternative, he, he said to me two very important things. He said, I don't want to die. And he said, if I do, maybe you'll learn something to help others. Uh, and so I think that's a pretty cool thing, you know, and um, I don't know how any one of us would, would react face to the same kind of thing, but he, he certainly has my vote of, of attaboy, you know. He's awake, he is um, recovering and speaking to his caregivers, and um, we hope, uh, that uh, the recovery that he is having now will continue. His level of illness was uh, probably exceeded our, our, our standards for what would be safe for human uh, heart transplantation. And there were other issues, you know, in his, uh, in his history that precluded that. Well, our patient uh, looked like a pretty healthy 57-year-old, except that his heart was failing and it failed badly. He was transferred uh, from another hospital to our cardiologist here at uh, University of Maryland Medical Center where he stayed about two weeks under intensified care in spite of multiple medications to drive his heart um, and a device called a balloon pump that was inserted through the groin to make his heart more efficient. He, he just didn't have enough blood flow through his body because of his weakened heart to sustain his life. So he was placed on another system called ECMO, which is designed to be a portable heart-lung machine. So it does all the work of the heart and the lungs. And he, he actually had been placed on that, I think November 28th, and, and uh, had continued right up to the surgery. So more than 50 days on that. Uh, and because he was on that system, he was stuck in bed, you know, full time basically on his back. I would like to say that we have a solid idea, like in heart transplantation from a human, we can give you pretty solid statistics, right? And come within one or two percentages of that for any individual. We've never done this in a human. And I, I like to think that um, uh, we, we have given him a better option than what continuing his therapy would have been. But whether it's a day, week, month, year, I don't know. Probably the biggest risk is now. Um, we seem to be past what we consider the hyperacute rejection phase that we would normally have seen in an animal organ that wasn't specially treated. Um, so we feel good about that one. So we're preparing for the next attack on his organ. We know that uh, the pig heart will be attacked by different soldiers in our body, different immune uh, players uh, can take it out and we, we have designed a treatment plan in addition to the humanized, genetically edited heart to try to account for that. So the driver for all this was to provide an opportunity for patients with end-stage heart disease who couldn't either qualify or just didn't get a heart in time to treat their really poor heart function with a transplant. What everybody wants, right, is not to be limited simply by the supply of human organs for transplant. And, uh, you know, a number of the organs can be treated, uh, you know, and used uh, in this way um, from a, an animal and can be commercialized basically as a, as a drug, right? 
and in essence on-demand delivery, right? You would have it delivered, removed, and delivered. If that's true, we will obviously change the face of what's possible for people who now wait years for a heart transplant.